17th Sunday, it's theme, it's the Epistle and Gospel. And I would like to speak to you about the Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary. One of the greatest defenders of the Rosary was St. Dominic. And one day St. Dominic was preaching the Rosary at Car Cassone. And there were heretics amongst the group that he was preaching to. The heretics mocked, a heretic in particular began to mock the 15 decades of the rosary. And as a result, he prevented many other heretics who were there from converting. As a punishment to this man, 15,000 devils entered into him, says St. Louis de Montfort. 15,000 devils. He had good parents, obviously devout Catholics. They brought their heretical, now possessed son to St. Saint Louis afterwards, or to St. Dominic, excuse me, afterwards, and they asked St. Dominic to cure him. Without hesitation, without being angered or showing contempt for this heretic now turned possessed man he asked everyone there to begin to pray the rosary and they prayed the 15 decades of the rosary for this possessed man and every time they prayed a Hail Mary 100 demons left the body of this possessed man they came out as red hot coals from his body such that as they had finished the rosary, all the devils were expelled from this young man. I don't know whether he asked for baptism. He probably was baptized if he had devout parents or if he simply asked for forgiveness, but he did. He acknowledged his heresy and he asked for forgiveness and many of his heretical friends did likewise ask to be received into the holy faith. This, my dear friends, is the power of the rosary. But doubt, jealousy, mocking doesn't stop with the faithful or with the lay people. In 1482, 10 years before Columbus set sail to the New World, Cartagena and the venerable Springer were ordinary priests with an extraordinary mission. They were not great speakers. They were not intelligent powerhouses. They were ordinary. Okay? They began preaching devotion to the rosary and encouraging belonging to the sodality of the rosary. Two priests who were in the area, who were rather intelligent, rather great preachers, began, became jealous. Seeing so many people flock to the congregation of that other priest, that they began to preach against the rosary. These two jealous priests actually preached against the rosary con confraternity and persuaded many not to join. One of them actually was determined to give a knockout sermon. He was going to give a sermon against the Holy Rosary. He prepared it. He was to give it the next Sunday. Next Sunday came. He wasn't going to be saying the Mass. He was going to give the sermon at the Mass. The Mass started. The Mass went on. It was time for the sermon. The priest is not there. They waited for a few moments, for a few minutes. And finally, someone went to look for him. And they found him dead with his sermon against the rosary in his hand. So the other priest tried to justify, oh, it was natural causes. He just died of a heart attack or something. So he was determined to give the rosary, the anti-rosary sermon. You may think this weird or strange. I've heard him. I was at uh, a university in Cincinnati once. A nun, got up, a nun got up on stage 
and made fun of the rosary and said it's an old ancient relic that we don't use anymore. I felt so sorry for her. If I hadn't been so young, I probably would have walked up there myself and apologized to the couple thousand people that were there hearing her say this. But I didn't, and I regret that. The second priest was determined to give that sermon. When it, when it came time for him to give the sermon, he became paralyzed physically, and he could not speak. It's not something new. We saw this with Saul of Tarsus going to persecute the Christians in Damascus, being knocked off his horse, blind, such that he could not function, going to the house of Ananias, being cured by Ananias. The second priest decided to carry out the, their wicked plan and deliver the prepared sermon, and he was paralyzed and could not speak. Chastened as he was, he promised Our Lady if she would restore his limbs to him and his tongue to him, the gift of speech, he would preach the rosary at every opportunity. And like Saul of Tarsus, instead of being a a persecutor, he became one of the greatest defenders of the Christian faith. This man became one of the greatest defenders of the rosary. Free thinkers and liberals, they will question these stories. Shouldn't surprise if they question everything else, everything that they cannot understand, everything that they cannot see. We have divine faith, not in the rosary. We have divine faith in the events of the Bible. We have human faith in those things which are taught to us by credible people. And we have pious faith, believing those things taught by pious individuals, such as St. Louis de Montfort. Charity is the fuel that causes us to believe all the things not contrary to reason. Pride induces us to doubt that which we do not understand as heretics then and heretics today and cause us to refuse that which we do not like. The rosary was brought to us from heaven by Our Lady as the Hail Mary was taught from heaven and brought from heaven by the angel Gabriel. Saint Gabriel announced the greatest event in all history to the world, that peace had been restored between God and man by the incarnation and by the redemption of mankind. The rosary prayed daily by devout Catholics, as Our Lady requested, gives us constancy in prayer and gives us grace, a channel of grace, and thus assist us in pleasing Mary's divine Son and saving our souls. The rosary is our most important, after the Blessed Sacrament, of course, our most important channel of life, of grace. By the rosary, countless souls derive strength and courage to focus their lives upon the pursuit of the divine. And it was Blessed Alan who says, the rosary is a rainbow in the heavens, a sign of mercy and grace that God has given to the world. (laughs) Pray the rosary daily, my dear friends. God love you and God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.